Welcome, boys and girls, scoutmasters, parents, and leaders. We're glad that you're here. And you will be interested, perhaps, to know about a study commissioned recently by Nickelodeon UK. You all have heard of Nickelodeon, right? The research looked into the differences in maturity between male and female and concluded that men don't really grow up until about age 43. <laughs> Whereas women emerge as mature at 32, a full 11 years earlier. In fact, the study found that eight out of 10 women believe that men never stop being childish. Do I hear an amen from our Girl Scouts? <laughs> As evidence, women cite men's tendency to think hot air and burping are hilarious. They point to the male habit of eating fast food in the wee hours, playing video games, staying silent during disagreements or arguments, being unable to cook simple meals, mom still doing their washing, trying to beat children at games and sports, driving too fast or racing another car at the lights or on the motorway, and retelling the same old jokes and stories, especially with their buddies. The study also revealed that more than once a month, this was done in the UK now, more than once a month, the average British woman felt compelled to tell her male partner to act his age. Now, does this have anything to say about our spiritual maturity? Let's consider the story from this morning's Old Testament reading. I suggest to you that it's a story about the dilemma that growing up brings to us. Notice that the first instruction God gave in the garden was that the couple could eat from every tree except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the reason that the fruit of that tree was to be avoided was that it would bring, what would it bring, boys and girls? If you ate it, you weren't listening to the story, were you? It would bring death. It would bring death. This kind of instruction is not unlike that given to children when we let them out to play in the backyard. You can play anywhere you want in the yard, but don't go outside of the fence now because you could get lost or hurt. And as long as our children obey us, they're safe. To obey, they need simply to trust what we tell them. But then comes the story of the snake and the disobedience of the first couple. The snake represents temptation, to be sure, but the snake also represents the urge that most of us experienced in late childhood or adolescence to push beyond the limits our parents set for us. In Adam and Eve's case, God had said they could eat from every tree but one. So, of course, like typical teens, that's the fruit they had to, to taste. And so they did. And in the process, they learned quite a bit. The forbidden fruit, after all, was from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And they gained exactly such knowledge. The problem was, with the knowledge came troubling emotions including shame, fear, and a sense of vulnerability. And there was no way, having once bitten the fruit, to untaste it. Thus, the unquestioning 
and untroubled relationship they had had with God was gone. Whereas before they had enjoyed God's presence, and God saw as the center of their world, now they hide and cower in fear. And God asked Adam why he was hiding. He, he replied, I was afraid because I, I was naked and I hid myself. God immediately recognizes that, that, that Adam has knowledge he did not have before. And that did not come from God. And so God asks, who told you that you are naked? God then asked if, if the pair had, had eaten from the forbidden tree. And Adam responds by blaming Eve. Eve blames the snake. And the snake has nobody else to blame. God holds all of them accountable. What happens next is sometimes read as punishment, but we're better off to read it as unavoidable consequences. God says, in effect, okay, you wanted to taste the fruit, and you have. Here's what it means. You, Adam, will now have to go to work and earn daily bread for your family. You, Eve, will bear children but it will not be without pain. Your lives will run their course, and eventually you will die. Isn't that something like what we try to help our children understand as they grow up? You are going to have to work and make a living, and it will not be all fun. Even jobs that you like will have some days when it is a grind to go to work. Having children means you have to be responsible. And being a parent is not without pain. Do I hear an amen from the parents? <laughs> when your kids are little, you will be filled with worry about their health, about their well-being, and that's a pain. Sometimes just having kids around can be a pain. But their needs supersede yours. When they're older, you'll be filled with worry about the choices they make, and that's a pain. They may even break your heart, and that's a real pain. You have to commit yourself to parenting. And by the way, none of us lives forever. So try to make good decisions yourself because some doors, once shut, will stay that way. For sure, we don't usually dump all that on our, on our offspring at once. But we want them to understand all of that sooner rather than later. There's one more thing, too. Before sending, sending them east of Eden, God made garments of skin for Adam and Eve, clothing that would cover them better than the fig leaves they had tried to use. We, too, when sending our kids on their way, often try to equip them with at least the starter stuff they will need. Getting them involved in Sunday school, scouting, and youth ministry early in life is usually part of the game plan. So instead of reading the Garden of Eden story as the entry of sin into the world, we can also read it as an example of what it means to grow up in the world as it is, where maturing means moving from innocence 
to knowledge, moving from unquestioning accepting to wise evaluating, but also to, to gaining worries, cares, responsibilities, and troubles. The challenge before us is finding a way to deal with the reality that that grown-up life is hard and that when it comes right down to it, each one of us is naked, vulnerable. But thanks be to God, boys and girls, young people and adults, we are not left alone to deal with being vulnerable. Though we are no longer in the garden, we don't have to be without the presence of God. For God can be found outside the garden as well. And so the Bible proclaims that the God who made both the garden and the world in which we live loves us and is worthy of our grown-up trust. There's testimony like this one from the writer of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Or this one from the Apostle Paul. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Or this one from the writer of Hebrews, let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Understanding the garden story as a tale of growing up means that life as a grown-up is not existence in a paradise, even if we continue to be immature. The traditional interpretation tells us we need the help of the Lord because of sin in the world. But this alternative interpretation tells us we need the help of the Lord because life is a grown-up proposition and we are all vulnerable. Thus, God gives us the clothing of His grace. God calls us throughout our life to be in relationship with God, people need the Lord, as uh, Sebastian's uh, solo reminds us. To know and follow Jesus, in whom God chose to reveal God's fullness. To know the ways of holy and abundant living. You know, they go, they go together, holiness and abundant living. This garden story shows us that the Bible is right in tune with that growing up jolt that ends up with us outside of the garden of childhood. But it also sets the stage for us to hear the rest of the Bible's witness that grown-up help comes from God who made us from the beginning and who is with us whether we are inside or outside of the garden. For now, our dear scouts, enjoy your time inside the garden as your adult leaders work with you to prepare you for life outside the garden.
But know this, in both places, God is with you. God is with us. Amen. I am here.